Hello and welcome to worship here at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church based out of New Prague, Minnesota. It is so good to be with you as we start our second week in the season of Advent. Last week to kick things off, we reflected on the gift of hope and this week we are taking some time to be still and reflect on the gift of peace that comes from Jesus. And as we do with the season of Advent, we have a very special candle lighting uh, to remind us of the light that Jesus brings to our lives. And so this week we have the Stika family. Uh, We have Miss Lauren, Will, and Molly Stika. So please join them as they lead us in our candle lighting for week two of Advent. On the second week of Advent, As we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of peace. From 2 Thessalonians 3.16, Christ comes to bring justice, wholeness, and harmony to every relationship throughout all creation. He wants to continually grant us peace in every situation. Let us pray. Stir up your hearts, Lord God, to prepare the the way of your only Son. By by his coming we give all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now that our candles are lit and we know that the light of Christ is with us, we continue with worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Welcome to worship. A reading from Luke, the third chapter. In the 15th year of the reign of Empire Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip was ruler of the region of Iteria, and Trachitanus and Lanesia, ruler of Albini. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, of son, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming of a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain hill should be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall shall see the salvation of God. The word of the Lord. Well, grace and peace to each of you on this second week of Advent. A couple weeks ago, I was gathering with a bunch of pastors from the Twin Cities area. We gathered together to share what it's been like to be a part of congregations in the 2021 year. I was relieved, I have to admit, (laughs) to recognize I'm not the only one feeling a little confused these days in terms of how to lead a church during a time like this. As we shared our reflections and our observations, towards the end of the gathering, the host invited us all to contribute to a blog. The instructions were as such. Just sit down 45 minutes in front of a computer, type out, free write what comes to your mind, to your heart, and then send it in. So we're invited to share our observations, our hopes, our fears about the church of today. I haven't done this yet, but I've been thinking about it ever since. Because I do believe we're in the middle of a significant transition in the great Christian church. Churches that were slowly declining are experiencing expedited closures. Recently, Gallup reported that for the first time in U.S. history, Membership within churches has fallen below 50% of the population. So in 1940, 73% of people in the United States claimed membership with the church. 73 in 1940. 
In 1999, it was 70% of people who claimed membership with the church. So from 1940 to 1999, for those 59 years, it stayed from 73 to 70. It was remarkably consistent up until 1999. But with this report, which collected data from 2019, so actually a couple years ago, people who claimed affiliation with the religious body was at 47%. So over the past 20 years, if you were to look at four people in the community, 20 years ago, three out of four would have belonged to a church. And in the past 20 years, it's gone below two out of the four. That's a significant transition in really recent memory in our country. And even more recently, a study was done on over 2,000 churches through the pandemic across 13 different denominations. And this was funded by Lilly. And this study founded that out of these 2,074 churches, the median attendance in 2019, so two years ago, was 75. But today, which was this fall of 2021, the median attendance is at 65. So 75 to 65 in two years. But what's interesting is that it feels like less because in person is 45 and online is 20. So 45 plus 20 equals 65. But two years ago, what was 75 people in a church is now 45. And so it feels like 60% of what it was just two years ago. And I have to say, our numbers at Holy Trinity are pretty on par with this trend. Our in-person attendance is at about 60% of what it was a couple of years ago. And in addition, between Facebook and YouTube, we have about 120 people. If you don't do the three-second Facebook views, if you do the actual Facebook views that are a minute, you have to be an administrator to see that. But between Facebook and YouTube, we have about an average of 120 people watching the full service online each week. So added together... 60% of in-person plus our 120 online. We're at about 80% of where we were a couple of years ago. But it feels like less because we're scattered, right? We're scattered. You're watching, you're worshiping from your home. You're not gathered in a sanctuary full of people right now. We are united by the Spirit, but it feels different. It feels different as we live into the hybrid realities we face in 20. 21 and beyond. So we're at this significant moment. We're not the church of 1940. We're not the church of 1999. We're not even the church of 2019. Right now, we are the church of 2021. So what do I say? I've been given a microphone with this blog, of course. What do I say? What needs to be said? What do I feel called to say? How about you? Let me ask you this. Let's say I handed you a microphone in the front of the church. (laughs) And I asked you, to say what needs to be said in terms of the Christian church, in terms of the observations you see, in terms of what you hope for the future of the church, your wishes, your hopes, your reflections on the image of Christianity in our country, your observations about where God is in the midst of the challenges that we face. What would you say? What would you say? Well, today we turn to the Gospel of Luke. And we hear from John the Baptist. And in the church year, the first week of Advent last week is often an apocalyptic kind of Bible passage, right? Uh, But the second week of Advent often turns to John the Baptist. And we hear what he has to say. For John, this was his chance to speak. He's got the microphone. People are listening. So what does he do? Well, John speaks and he shares his conviction that God is about to do a new 
thing. So be prepared, he says. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So prepare the way of the Lord, John the Baptist says. You see, John was looking ahead. He was looking ahead. He was telling people to prepare themselves for a future where God does something new. So prepare now. As he stood in this significant moment, he points people forward. Points people forward. Now what's interesting about this passage is that he says these words, but he actually didn't make them up. He's quoting somebody else. He's quoting a different part of the Bible. He's quoting Isaiah chapter 40. This is from the Old Testament. This prophet Isaiah in this chapter 40 says these profound words to a people who at the time were in exile. The Israelites were in exile. They'd been taken from their homes, taken from their community, taken from their normal routines. They were waiting for the days when things could get back to normal. They were disoriented, they were frustrated, they were grieving, and they longed for how things used to be. And so in chapter 40, Isaiah gives them a word from God. And he starts by saying this, Comfort, comfort now, my people. You see, God had mercy on these people as they were disoriented, frustrated, wishing things could be back to the way they were. Isaiah gives them this word of comfort. And last week, the TG sang this song as part of our Advent One service. This is often a song for Advent because Advent's the season of waiting for something and sometimes waiting for something to come can be a painful experience. And so we start with that hymn, Comfort, Comfort My People, this Advent hymn. But chapter 40 continues, and this is what the prophet says after saying, Comfort, Comfort My People. The prophet says, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Does that sound familiar? (laughs) But you see, for the exiles, the people who were taken from their homes, this prophet gives them hope by pointing them forward by shifting their focus from what they had lost to what God is doing in the future. The prophet promises them a future where God rights the wrongs that have occurred. The prophet Isaiah gives them hope for tomorrow. In fact, Isaiah continues in this book, uh, in this chapter 40, And the the chapter ends with some words that we often turn to at the most disconcerting times, often at funerals. Isaiah 40 ends with these words, Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You see, at times of death, we have no choice but to look to a future where we hope and we trust that God is the God, not just of the dead, but of the living, the eternal living. That's the kind of hope that these people in exile were holding on to. That if they were to wait for the Lord in this period of exile, God will renew their strength. God will help them mount up with wings like eagles and they will soar into a future filled with hope and promise. That's the context for that passage in Isaiah chapter 40. So at a time when the exiles were needing a word of comfort, a word that redirected their focus forward, preparing a way, 
but simultaneously a word that offered hope for the future. God gave them that in chapter 40. So fast forward from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Fast forward from Isaiah 40 to Luke chapter 3. Fast forward to the significant moment when God gives John the Baptist a microphone. You see, this was his chance to speak. He's got the microphone. People were listening. So what does he do? He prepares them for the future by reading how God has helped God's people in the past. By quoting Isaiah chapter 40. He reads words from this holy book, words spoken by someone at a different time, a different place, a different context, but the same God. The same God who did something back then that could give them hope for right now. That's what John does. That's what John does. So fast forward. Not just to 1940 or 1999 or 2019. Fast forward to 2021. To this moment when God is about to do something new. Fast forward to this moment, the season of Advent, the season of hope, where we shift our focus from what we've lost in order to prepare ourselves for what is to come. For what God is already preparing. A future where God writes the wrongs that have occurred in our lives. We have this hope. So what do we do? This is our chance to speak. We've got the microphone, you could say. People are listening. <laughs> so what do we say? Well, we prepare ourselves. We prepare ourselves for the future by reading about how God has helped God's people in the past we turn to this holy book. Words spoken by someone at a different place, at a different time, different context, but the same God. The same God who did something back then that can give us hope right now. We hear, comfort, comfort now, my people. We hear, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain and hill be made low. And uneven ground shall become level. And the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We hear, those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So praise be to the God who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. Savior of the nations, come, Virgin Son, make here your home. Marvel now, O heaven and earth, God has chosen such a birth, not by human and blood, by the mystic breath of God, was the word of God made flesh, fruit of woman blossom fresh, wondrous birth, O wondrous child, from his throne of virgin mind, Mary, God, and Mary's Son, eager now his race to run. From God's heart the Savior speeds, back
back to God, His pathway leads. Look to vanquish death's command. Back to reign at God's right hand. Now your manger shining bright. Hallowed night with newborn light. Night cannot this light subdue. Let our faith come ever new. Praise we sing to Christ the Lord, Virgin Son, Incarnate Word, to the Holy Trinity. Praise we sing eternally. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hello everyone, my name is Karen Taylor, and on behalf of all of the staff here at Holy Trinity, I want to thank you for joining us for worship this week. Here at Holy Trinity, it's our mission to share God's love with all people from one generation to the next. Well, we are in the middle of Advent, which means that we have a bunch of special worship services coming up this month. The first one is our early family Christmas program. Now, if you love kids and you love costumes, you should come to that service on December 15th at 6 p.m. Now, not only is it going to be in person, it will be live streamed as well. So this is a great time to see kids all dressed up in their Christmas best. They get to wear costumes. They get to sing traditional songs. And it's a great way to be reminded of the reason for the season. We also have a blue Christmas service coming up the following Wednesday on December 22nd. Now, if you are not familiar with the Blue Christmas service, there is some information in our latest newsletter. You can find our newsletters by going to our website, holytrinityonline.org, and cl clicking on HDLC Connections. Within that newsletter, you will find Pastor Alicia's frequently asked questions um, that she answers for us. So in case you're wondering what this service is all about, that there's some great information in our newsletter for you. Now, speaking of the website, you will also notice there is a new employment button. We have a uh, ongoing search for a new youth director. Hopefully, hopefully this is not a spoiler alert for you. Um, our beloved Casey Fremstead is leaving us at the end of the year. And so we wish her the best of luck uh, on our future endeavors, but that means we need to get a new youth director. So if you or anybody you know has qualifications, um, some experience leading children, youth, or family ministries, please direct them to our website and have them click on that employment button. Uh, from there, they will see all the information that they need in order to apply. Now, also on our website, you will notice that we are looking for some volunteers. We also have a notice in our newsletter, too. So we are looking for volunteers to not only usher on Sunday morning, we're looking for that pro presenter volunteer that sits uh, in the back of the church at the computer and advances the slides during worship. We're also looking for some readers or some speakers for our online worship services. So if you'd like to um, either read the Bible verses or um, you can say the Lord's Prayer for us, uh, let us know so you can contact Jamie in the office or um, yeah, just email Jamie in the office and she will get you to the right person. Now I also want to give one last reminder that it is not too late to turn in those estimate of giving cards. I know we talked about this a lot in October, but uh, Pastor Alicia and the finance, finance team, they are up to their eyeballs in the budget for next year. And so by turning in your estimate of giving cards, that gives us a really good idea of what we can plan for in 2022. Not only with programming, but with staffing and all sorts of important things like that that help us spread the mission of Holy Trinity. 
So thanks so much for turning in those Estimate of Giving cards. Lastly, I'd like to remind you how you can give your offering. You can mail it into the church office. Maybe you can mail in your Estimate of Giving card at the same time. So Jamie will pick that up from the mailbox every day, um, and you can make sure that's nice and secure. The second way is downloading our Simply Giving PDF form. That is where you indicate whether you want your offering taken from your checking, your savings, and the amount. So it's a really easy way to set up automatic giving, and that way when you go on vacation or you don't make it church some Sunday, your offering will always be, um, be there. Last way is the Vanco Faith app. That is the app that you download onto your phone, and you can uh, automatically give uh, weekly, monthly, however much you want to give, and you can set it up from your phone. Well, that's it for me. Thanks so much for joining us. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.